Don't know if you guys remember her, but this is Ava. I had her in one of my videos years ago. She was just a puppy back then. She just wanted to stop by and say hi. Now, believe it or not, as soon as 2021, your iPhone could actually be curved inwards like this. Much like the LG Flex, Apple is supposedly working on an iPhone with a very gentle inward curve from the top of the screen going towards the bottom. So it's a lot different than Samsung's, which goes outwards on the edges. And this is potentially what it could look like. I mean, this is kind of a funny little concept. Obviously, it's not gonna have a flip out thing like that. This is inspired by the Nokia 8110 and it's a Martin Hegex version of it. Now, Bloomberg actually released this really long report detailing some new features coming to futuristic iPhones. And it's kind of cool because when I hear Bloomberg talking about it, you know there's a morsel of truth to it. And beginning with a technology that would allow you to control your phone without having to touch it. Literally, you would just hover your finger over the display and then you'd get certain prompts or gestures based on what you do or how many fingers you use. There are very little details about this, but Bloomberg says Apple is working on it and it will be coming in a future iPhone. And to give you an idea, I'm gonna give you Microsoft's presentation of this and it is actually incredible. If Apple were to implement this even half as well as they did, it would look so amazing in iOS. So they had several examples. One, you're watching a video and you don't want to actually have the on-screen video controls interrupting you. So you bring your finger up to the display and they just pop up there. Look at how handy that is. If you're holding it with one hand, you get different controls and vice versa. So that is so cool. And also when in a browser, you'd bring your finger up close and you'd get an option to see where you can click, which links are clickable. And there's also this really cool one. Apple doesn't really have much support for this, but let's say in the files app, you were to select a file and then bring another finger over and hover it over the display and you'd get more options about what you can do with that file. So really cool implementation of this, depending on how many fingers you have, you'd get different options. It just all around seems like a great solution. And even though personally, I don't believe Apple takes full advantage of 3D touch yet, with time, you know, they will keep developing that. And having this as a display input option would be great, I think. And Bloomberg is reporting that as soon as 2020 to 2021, we could be seeing a display that curves inwards on an iPhone. I can't imagine why I would need that. The display is so small. Would you really notice the benefits of that? But Apple knows better, of course. It's unknown why they would do this. There are very little details on this right now, but maybe it'd be similar to something that LG Flex did, although I did not like that phone. It was uncomfortable in your pocket. It was just a bulky phone. I, I don't know how Apple could do it and make it work, but who knows? A few years, we could be seeing this futuristic banana tech in our pockets. And at the end of the report, they added that Apple is still working on micro LED technology, but we won't see it until three to five years from now. So a lot of people were hoping to see it this year on the Apple Watch, but the soonest we could even possibly see it, DigiTimes is saying, is 2019, because Apple is apparently working with TSMC on producing the micro LED display, and they could possibly be releasing it next year, but certainly not this year. In any case, OLED is pretty great. On the iPhone 10. it's such an improvement from the last generation LCD, and I'm happy with it. I mean, micro LED is cool, it'll come in the future, but I'm more than happy with what we have now with organic LED. Now, for those of you waiting for Apple's new Mac Pro, the redesigned modular version where you'd be able to swap out parts, Apple did announce this last year that it would be coming this year. Unfortunately, they just talked to a TechCrunch editor that visited the campus, and they said that it will not be happening up until 2019, so we have another year to go. They wanted to be very clear that for anybody that was holding out to upgrade to the Mac Pro, it won't be happening until next year, so you can buy whatever you needed to this year, unless, of course, you want to wait another year. And the really great thing is that Apple is actually working with a bunch of award-winning artists, you know, just people that work with computers on a daily to produce art, to video, you know, programs, stuff like that. And they're trying to find friction points, things that annoy them, that frustrate them. They're trying to patch that before releasing this product. So that's finally great that Apple is listening to what people want, not just giving it to them like they did with the last generation Mac Pro, which you can see how that ended up. So it's really great that they're doing this. It's going to be another year, but I think it's always better to wait longer than to receive something you didn't want half-baked. And we all knew this was going to happen. Everything was heading towards this. Now Bloomberg is reporting that Apple will be ditching Intel in 2020, or as soon as 2020. Apple has been building their own chips for iPhones for quite some time. They've been madly successful at it. The numbers speak for themselves. And now it looks like they'll be applying the same strategy to their computers, as well as the iPads, of course, are going to continue that into the future. So Bloomberg is reporting that it's just not working. The Intel gains are very slow. They're not making much progress. You know, the TikTok schedule went to tick, tick, talk. And the gains we are getting just aren't enough. So Apple wants to seamlessly integrate the processor with Mac OS. And the only way to do that is to really take control of the battery life. The entire control over the CPU is to build your own CPU. So that's what they will be doing. And a new report today is saying that Apple will be working very closely with AMD to produce a custom chip that will be used on the Mac. So it won't be entirely built by Apple, but it 
will be most of their own architecture. So they'll have more control over it. Bloomberg is saying because of that, they'll be able to get better battery life, better performance out of the chips just because of how closely they can work with it. And as soon as iOS 12, we could be seeing a major overhaul to Siri, something that Apple has desperately been needing for years already. And of course, the HomePods. The HomePods with Siri right now are just bad, honestly. Why would they release it with such a crippled version of Siri? So. What's happening with Apple and Siri? Apple's been hiring so many developers to work on Siri, engineers. I mean, they've got over 160 listings and that's more than any other year in relation to Siri engineers. So Apple's definitely ramping that up. And to top it all off, Apple just poached Google's artificial intelligence chief with probably a lot of money to come over for them and probably work on the Siri project. So Siri could be getting much smarter as soon as iOS 12, possibly in a future version, but it definitely was rumored that Siri would be improving in iOS 12. And futuristic crime is pretty damn impressive. So China just caught some smugglers smuggling $80 million, American equivalents of iPhones over the border. And this is refurbished iPhones. They were using drones and bags filled with iPhones on a 660 foot cable. So they were zipping those along and overnight they could transport as much as 15,000 iPhones in these sacks. That is crazy. Imagine how much batteries they must have had stacked up charging and just replacing those, zipping it down, coming back, replacing it, adding more iPhones. That is so crazy. $80 million worth. And I feel like this is just the beginning. I mean, criminals are getting smarter. So I, if you guys remember back in the day, people would strap iPhones to their bodies, go through the airport like that. This is the next generation of that sort of transportation. Anyways, thought that was really interesting. But anyways, guys, that is the latest on Apple. A lot of futuristic Apple products that I'm very excited about to see materialize in the next few years. The future is bright. We think that Apple is all out of innovation. A lot of people say that it is simply not true. They've got so much planned. I feel like we're not even prepared for it. But anyways, guys, stay tuned and thanks for watching. Peace.